My name is Lynn Patrick and I'm at States of Independence to provoke, promote Mystery Nights which is actually a company that runs murder mystery evenings but murder mystery evenings with a difference. Uh, I came into Mystery Nights um, through publishing which I did for seven years. Uh, I ran a small imprint called Creme de la Crime which now has been sold on to a bigger company and we use the murder mystery evenings as promotion events and we just carried on with the murder mystery evenings and we we also uh, promote the the backlist of the of, of the authors who went to the bigger company I started publishing in 2003. We, our first books came out in 2004 and we carried on until 2010. Well, I've always been a writer and as well as a writer, I, I've been involved in things like uh, a large short story competition and an editorial support service and creative writing tutoring. And there were an awful lot of new writers out there who were just not getting a chance with publishers. And I thought, if I take the most popular genre, crime fiction, and debut authors, then maybe the fact that debut authors don't sell terribly well will be balanced out by the fact that crime fiction does and there'll be a meeting in the middle and we will sell enough books to survive. <clears throat> we sold enough books to survive for six years but after that I just felt the company needed a bigger uh, a bigger approach, better resources. I, I had very little money for marketing and I felt that a bigger company would, would be able to do justice to these authors that I discovered and I actually discovered 13 authors, four of whom have gone on to the new publisher, three others have gone on to other publishers. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to the others but I think they're still writing and, and, and still in the business. The biggest challenge is, oh dear, marketing, getting the books out there, getting, um, getting the buzz going about the books. Um, the best way of selling a book is word of mouth, but you have to generate word of mouth. Uh, you have to make sure that enough people know about it to spread the word. And that's the biggest challenge any publisher faces. Um, these days, a lot is said about authors having to promote their own books. Um, there was an illusion, not so very long ago, that that was the publisher's job. It was never the publisher's job. The publisher has a certain amount of time, certain amount of resources to put into it. But by and large, the author has to get out there and promote the books, him or herself. And that was what we encouraged. We gave the authors tools to use. We gave them the murder mystery evenings, which they could offer to libraries and bookshops as fun events, which would bring people into the shop. Um, when the, the murder mystery evenings were used uh, to promote the books, then we, we tied them in with the books. Uh, the, the sleuth in the murder mystery evening was a character in a book, and in the book of an, the author who was running the event at the time. Uh, these days they're far more general, so um, it, doesn't, it doesn't work in the same way. Um, but yeah, that, that was really all we could do. It was before Facebook and Twitter became huge marketing tools. Um, we, we, we were just about coming to the end of our natural life and, and I was preparing to, to, to sell the company on when, when that was beginning to happen. Um, so our tools were basically the authors we were, we, we were publishing. Mystery book. Characters. Same as makes any good book. Uh, characters that the reader can relate to. You you know when you read when you have certain expectations when you start to read a, a mystery novel. You know what's going to happen. You know that the triumph and the bad guy is going to get his comeuppance because that is the nature of mystery fiction. So you need something more. You need you need something in addition to the story, which has an ending which you can predict. You probably can't predict exactly how it's going to end, but you, you know approximately where you're going with it. Whereas if you have a character who you can engage with and relate to and feel when you put the book down that you've lost a friend, 
then it's, it kind of makes you want to go back to it. <clears throat> it also makes you want to read more by that same author, about that same character. What would you advise uh, someone who is thinking of uh, starting their own publishing company oh, these days? Don't. No. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Unless you've got an awful lot of money that you can invest in first place and you're prepared to lose. Is it really that bad? Yes. Why? Because nobody's buying books anymore. And small companies don't have marketing resources. A promotion budget. It's, yeah, it's, it, you, you need a promotion budget. Mm. And you've, you've got to be able to go into, if you really want to sell some numbers, you've got to be able to go into Waterstones, give them their very large discount to get in with a promotional fee. And <coughs> risk get <coughs> excuse me, and risk getting eight percent of the books returned after a month. So what's the future of the book? <laughs> hopefully hopefully you can still buy books but it's going to go more and more towards ebooks I think. Now in your view is that a good thing or a bad thing? Depends on what the authors and the publishers get out of it because one of the things is that there's, there's a lot of pressure for e-books to be sold for practically nothing and you'll end up with, well you lose the quality basically. Where, where is this pressure coming from? Where is it coming from? People wanting to buy things cheap, and you know, you get people self publishing, putting them on the internet for 99p. There's no way a publishing company can do that sort of thing. You agree with what you think? I can't disagree with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I fear for the, for the future of the book trade if editing is taken out of the equation. Um, the, and editing is taken out of the equation when people self-publish. But then, you know, talking about self-publishing, some of, uh, especially like with poetry, some of uh, the best, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying self-publishing doesn't work full stop. Um, what I am saying is that you have to be very, very careful when you self-publish a book that what you are self-publishing is as good as it would be if it had gone through a mainstream publisher. Um, poetry and poets are quite often begin by self-publishing their own their, their, their work um, simply because poetry has such and it's a niche market and mainstream publishers tend not to not to publish poetry you, you, you're talking about small presses anyway um, and small presses want more evidence that you know what you're doing um, Self-publishing works, I, I don't know, my feeling is self-publishing works in, in a niche market, but for mass market, thing, mass market fiction like crime, I think mainstream is probably more efficient and, and will also ensure the quality of, of what's going out. I mean, what Jeff said about quality, is, I think it's right. If people can buy a book at 99p, and a book at 4.99. They're going to choose the 99p one, and the 99p one is not necessarily a book that has gone through a proper editorial process. And books do need editors. There's no doubt whatsoever in my mind about that.